Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. Welcome back to the Kaufman Stadium and welcome back to our Stratomatic Baseball Series. As spring training 2019 is now well underway, I figured it was time to revisit our game between the 2014 Kansas City Royals and Chicago White Sox. Uh, we've covered the basic game and we've covered the advanced game. Well, we've kind of dipped our toes, if you like, in the advanced game because we're going to see more of that now. But we're going to introduce the super advanced rules as well. The advanced game and the super advanced are much the same. Super advanced just adds a thin layer of extra complexity, a few more decisions to make and some perhaps a few rarer plays that can happen. But the gameplay is pretty much the same. So let's kick off then. We've got um, Chicago White Sox. We're in the top of the fourth inning. And we've got Connor Gillespie at the plate. He's a lefty. And we've got James Shields pitching right-handed for the Royals. Now remember, we're playing at the, the K. Ignore this. Uh, cubbies. This is the Cubbies here, but that's just a generic. That's just what you get with the with the game, but one of the things that the the super advanced rules introduce is a ballpark effect. Okay, depending on where you're playing. So we're playing at the K, and this is a 2014 season. You'll get one of these um, sheets for whichever base game you buy, but you can do download these. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can download these from the Stratomatic website. But what you'll and what you'll note here is there's a couple of symbols that we've been ignoring up till now. That's the omega symbol and this downward point, pointing, if you like, uh, triangle, which is the ballpark effect. So depending on which ballpark you're playing, if you see on a hitter card, this downward pointing arrow here, so this normally this would be a, a ground ball, B, back to the picture. Instead you ignore that, and you use the ballpark effect. And it depends if the hitter's left-handed or right-handed, and you roll the d20. So uh, for the K, it would be uh, 1 to 11 is a single, uh, 12 to 20 is a line-out. Okay. Typically, you'll write this on your score sheet, so you don't need to keep remembering. So 1 to 11 is a single star, and then 12 to 20. For a lefty, it's a... Uh, line out to the second baseman and for a righty it's a line out to the shortstop. You can also introduce weather effects and you'll get a weather effects chart um, in the game as well or, or ballpark effects. It's up to you to decide which one you want to apply ballpark or weather. We're going to choose to play ballpark effects. Okay let's just crack straight into things then. So remember we're playing the advanced game with a layer of super advanced on top so everything you see us doing here is pretty much the same as a, a regular advanced game. Okay, Gillespie's up to bat, left-handed, we just roll our three dice as normal. Okay, that's a 1-8, a 1-8. I'm hoping we'll get someone on base because really the super advanced game is pretty much the same until we get a man on base and then things start to get a little bit more interesting. Right, a 1-8 is a uh, line out to the first baseman. So a bit of a change in the way that we record the games. Um, it's up to you as well how you do this. But remember, first baseman is uh, one, two, three, yeah? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So one, two, one, two, three. First baseman's a three. So what you can actually do is just write a number three in here to signify that that was a line out to the, to the first baseman. And that's our first out. Of course, I could manufacture some 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 rolls to teach you the rules, but I really want to just show you. Um, I just want to show you a play a playthrough as well. So, okay, Canerco's coming in. He's a right-hander, and this time we get a four-seven. This is off the pitcher's card. Canerco's a righty, so we go to the red section. Four-seven. That's a split decision. So a single star on a one to nineteen or a ground ball to the first baseman on a 20. So we're looking for something other than a 20. And it's a 15. Great stuff. Kaneko has chalked up 
a single first hit of the inning. Now things are going to get interesting. With Kanoko on first base, the pitcher's got a little bit more work to do. So Flowers comes into bat. And what you'll see in a, in a baseball game is when the pitcher's standing here with a man at first, every now and again, he may throw over to first. You know, the first baseman's trying to get a lead here, get a little bit of a jump. So as the defensive team manager, you've got to decide, normally we've got infield back, right? You've got to decide whether you want to hold the base runner. Now the interesting thing here is, in Super Advanced, when you're holding the base runners, we've got to say who's doing the work here. All right. So normally, to hold a runner at first, the first baseman might be standing up here and the second baseman more up here. Right. What happens is, it, to hold the base runner, the first baseman comes in closer to the foul line, which means the second baseman pulls in as well to try and cover this gap right, that's formed because of the runner. So things really do change um, as you get a man on base. It changes the way the infield plays. Uh, we're not going to hold Kanoko as it goes because he's a really bad stealer. So we're going to keep the infield back. Always think about that decision. The offensive team will want to know when they're stealing whether the defensive team is infield back, infield in, holding the base runners, or indeed corners in is a new one. And again, we'll look at that. Perhaps when you've got a man on it first and third. So with infield in, we're all in. With corners in, we're only in at first and third. And his short stops back where he normally is. Okay, he's not in. Okay, so it's kind of a halfway house between infield back and infield in. Right, but we're staying infield back. We're keeping things simple at the moment. But the other thing you'll see, Mr. Ross is trying to get to, the pitcher may toss the ball over here every now and again to the first baseman, who will try and tag up this guy who's trying to get a jump on first. All right trying to pitch him out. The other thing that can happen, and, and another advanced play that you may see, is when the pitcher's pitching, he may throw a wild pitch. Okay. So what we do is when there's a... And it's, it's normally a wild pitch because he's got one eye over here. He's not focusing on the batter. He's got one eye over here. Right. This first baseman's doing a job. Not, has he only, not only has he got on base with the potential to score, he's distracting the pitcher somewhat. And this is why, what we do now in super advanced, when we're throwing that pitch... We also chuck in the D20. And if we get a one or a two on here, there's a potential for a wild pitch or trying to pitch this guy out over here, committing a bulk. A bulk is where the pitcher has committed a technical error, right? He's he's misfooted on the on the mound and he's tried to make like he's throwing a pitch but throws over here. Right? We can't have that happening. We can't have the pitcher messing about with his footwork to try and fool these players. That's an illegal move in baseball. Okay, It's like a foul. Okay, Either you're committed to throwing over here or you're committed to throwing that way. You can't mess up. Sometimes, and most of the time, these guys ball by, by mistake. All right, so what we're doing is we're throwing this die to look at those potential two effects, a wild pitch or a bulk. If a one or a two comes up on here, then we'll talk about it. All right, That's when that happens. As it goes, James Shield, yeah, he's 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 not so good. He's a bit, a little bit loose. It says BK four WP twelve. That's the probability out of twenty of him throwing a bulk, and this is a wild pitch one to twelve. So if he does hit a one or a two on this die, there's a potential. If the numbers are bad here, he's more likely to throw a wild pitch than he is to bulk. But um, that's what those numbers are all about. As it goes, it was a four, so we ignore that die, and we just go back to doing what we do regularly. Okay. Now, some people like to throw it first and see what happens. You can, just for the sake of everything, roll them all together. You'll notice too that in the first uh, four parts, I was rolling the pitch die and then the swing, but roll all of them together, and it gives you a little bit of speed at the, at the game. Okay, so we've got a one ten. So this is going to be off Tyler Flowers' card, and ones are always good. So what have we got? We got a one ten. Yeah, we got a double star star on a 1 to 5, or a single star star on a 6 to 20. That's really cool. That means whatever's going to happen now, uh, Kaneko's heading over to third base. A star star, right? A star star. Right, let's roll to see what the batter gets a single or a double. It's a 4, that's a double. We 
got stars on the double, so there's no chance of taking that extra base, remember? And he gets round here off uh, flowers, number eight. Still with one out, the White Sox are looking like extending their lead as Jordan Danks comes in at the bottom of the order. And here we've got a lefty. Okay, so we're going to include that D20. The, the fact that the pitcher may be messing up. I'm still not stealing. I've got a couple of guys who, who can't. Well, Flowers can steal, but he can't with uh, Kaneko in front of him. If you look at Kaneko's card for stealing, we're going to be looking at these numbers, okay? we got blanks all around, dash, 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 dash. Kaneko's not stealing, okay? Okay, so John Danks, roll these dice. Uh, infield back still, this is fair. There's seven on the D20, ignore that, that's a five, seven. So we're off to James Shields' card against the lefty, so we're in the blue section, a 5-7 is a ground ball to the second blade, baseman X. So remember, in advanced, we roll that D20 to see what the result is, and we look at the advanced uh, fielding chart, uh, which was this one. In super advanced, this is replaced with these charts, these super advanced fielding charts, okay, in a slightly different one. Okay, and it, it introduces some more interesting play. And this is where uh, we get a little bit more involved in the ratings of the fielders involved. Second baseman for the Royals is Infante. So if we have a look at Infante's card. Omar is second baseman, rated 3. Okay, and an E14. So what you'll hear people say is that Omar is a 3E14. A 3E14. Okay. Now what you'll do is you'll get more advanced. When you're chalking up or writing up your team sheets, you may find it easier to say, uh, put these numbers on here, so it's easier, so you don't have to keep referring back to a sh sheet. You may just write here that Omar is an E, uh, was he a 3E14, okay? So you don't have to keep looking it up. I see a lot of people, a lot of strap players do this. And you're going to need both of those. So three to determine whether he makes the play. Now remember, if he's holding on, he's not a three, he's a four. All right? If he's helping out, if he's responsible for keeping the guy held on base, he's not a three, he's a four, he's one worse. But he's not holding on, it's infield back, so he's still an E3. Second baseman. This is the outfield chart. Okay, flip over. This is the infielders, first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, third baseman, X chart. Okay. So what you do is it's kind of it reads from left to right. We start with the range, the range of our fielder. He's a range three. And what we do then is we roll the D20, just like we did in advanced. Okay, so it was ground ball X. Let's get that X. This is the X. Alright, so let's roll it. It's a four. That's not so good. Not so good. Okay, so we look at the four. We read across to three. Okay, it's a bad play, and we haven't made we haven't made it. If we look, we want a G. Okay, to make the play, field the ball successfully. We're looking for a G. But as it goes, with a four and a rated three fielder, it's an SI one. That's a single with one star. If he was holding the baseman on and was a rated four instead, it will be a single with two stars. Okay. Single with one star, but and this is where we get a little bit more advanced. There's still a chance that, that fielder makes an error with the throw. Okay, so what he's going to try and do uh, it depends what happens is because we've got men on base, we've got to then look at the outcome, figure out what's happened. Okay, so <clears throat> he's what do we say? He's an E14. So second baseman E14. We go to the error section, and in the middle here is all the E ratings from 0 down to 71. Okay, here's our E14 in the middle here. What we do now is we roll these three dice, the two red and the white, and we add the number together. And that gives us um, an error score. 
Okay, so I've rolled a 10. 6, 3, and 1 are 10. Lower E ratings are better, less chance of having an error. Okay, we're E14, and what you're doing is you're reading across and you're looking at these numbers. See, we've got a 5 here, a 15, 16, a 3, or an 18. If you roll any of those numbers, then we've had an error in the throw. It's misthrown it. Okay, number 5 is one of these rare plays. All of these are 5s. If you ever throw a 5 on that, you get one of these rare plays. Something that you may um, see come up in, in a game once in a while, a special little defensive play. Or de defensive error. Okay, so uh, E14, there's no 10 here. If we'd rolled like a 15, it would be an E1. Because what we'd do then is we've established no error, we go to the symbol section and then we look at the result. So we had an SI1. Okay, if there was an error, E1, it, you'd read that little box here. It says single and error. So the batter gets to second and, and runners advance two bases. Okay. As it goes, we've got a single with no error, um, so we've got a single and runners advance one base. Okay, and Echo comes into score. So thanks. He gets over to first base on a single. He gets a ribby because Flowers advances on Danks, and Kaneko comes home unscored. Back to the top of the order, Eaton comes into bat. Thanks is on. Kaneko's home. We've got the lefty up. And now there's a chance that Danks is going to look to move into a better scoring position. Um, we might want to try and prevent this happening by bringing the corners in. Okay, so let's do that. Corners in. Now, with corners in, we're reducing the ability of this guy to score from third. Um, it also reduces our abilities to turn a double play, but we've got no one in second. So, I don't know, we were potentially looking at a 5-4 double play, 5-3 double play. But basically, because we're not all the way in, basically what it means is uh, any ground ball hit to third base or first baseman is like, is like an infield in. Uh, ground balls hit to second and short are like infield back. Before play commences, we can also say, you can do this with corners in or infield in. Remember, the normal play here, if uh, we've only got one out, um, is to do a sacrifice bunt, right? So Adam Eaton is a good bunter. He's got a bunting rating of B. He lays down a bunt, ball goes here, guy on third comes in to, to score, right? So we're trying to prevent that with corners in. Uh, we don't want the bunt going here, here. We can pick it up, field it. So with corners in, the bunting rating is reduced. We can still have a crack at it and show you how it works. Uh, but the other offensive decision is whether we want to hold uh, Danks here at first base. I think we do. So we're holding the runner here at first base. Okay, Eaton. I mean, obviously, Eaton uh, Danks can still try and make that run from first to second. Um, if he chose to, let's see what would happen. Um, we're not going to, but we let's see what happens. We're going to swing away. I mean, Eaton is good at getting on base, so we should get a hit. But, um, yeah, let's see what would happen. Let's just say that Danks wanted to get the jump and try and steal second and move over. Uh, you know, a single star star would, would bring him in to score, right? Eaton's a lefty, by the way. So previously, we were looking at stealing B. Now we completely ignore this, and we look at these numbers here. Okay, it says star 2 to 8, 11 slash blank, and then we've got some numbers in braces. Okay, stealing in super advance is a kind of a two stage affair. It doesn't have to be, but if you wish, you can try and get a jump on the pitcher. He's going into his wind up, you're going to take that run, you're going to start off, you haven't seen the pitch yet, you're just going to start off running from first to second. Then you use this first number here, 15. You're going to successfully steal on a 1 to 15 on our D20. Okay. Or you can wait and you can steal as normal. You don't want to try and get the jump. This time you're going to steal successfully on a 1 to 13. Okay. It's up to you. So how do we say whether we've got the jump or not? This is what these numbers are about here. The first thing we see here is a star. Okay. It says star, so it's very small, but the star 2 to 8, comma 11. The star means if I'm not being held, then I would automatically get the jump. OK, 
Okay, I don't have to look at these numbers at all. The star says, if the, if the uh, defensive team decides not to hold me on first, I will always get that jump. I'm going to use that 15 value. But I am being held. So that means I have to roll the dice. I have to roll these two red dice. On a roll of 2 to 8, or an 11, I get the jump successfully. Anything other than that, so if I roll a 9, 10, or a 12, I don't get the jump. Now what that means is, there's a slash here. If you don't get the jump, there's there might be another range of numbers here after the slash. Let's say there was a 12 after the slash. What that means is, if I did, if I rolled a 12, not only did I fail to get the jump, I'm immediately out. Okay, I get caught just trying to get the jump. Right, I get picked off at first base. Right, as it goes, what it means if I fail, because there's a slash here and there's no numbers, it doesn't matter. I just don't get the jump. But I can still try and steal, but I have to use these second numbers. But I could hold. I could just decide to hold. If I successfully get a jump, and here's the catch, if I successfully get a jump, okay, roll the two dice, let's see. Okay, I rolled a seven. It's within this range. I do successfully get the jump. I'm going to use this first range for stealing, one to 15, not the second range, one to 13. Here's the catch. The catch is, if I successfully get the jump, I have to now steal. I can't say now, I'll change my mind. I have to now steal. So you've got to roll that d20. Okay, I rolled a d20. Six, I'm in the one to 15, I successfully steal. I rolled something like a 16, then I'm out, I'm caught stealing. But, here's the other thing. There are some adjustments to these numbers. The numbers are adjusted by the ability of the pitcher and the ability of the catcher. This team, these two, you know, the pitcher and the catcher, they work as a pair. All right, pitch comes in, catcher picks it up, throws it down to second, tries to catch this guy stealing. So, what you do is you look at the uh, pitcher, and it will have a hold number. It says hold minus three. Okay, so we deduct three from this. So it isn't one to 15 and one to 13. It's now one to 12 and one to 10. And we consider the catcher as well. So if we look at um, uh, Salvador Perez. Perez is a really good catcher. Um, he's got his arm, his arm in rate right in the brackets here. It's minus four. So it's minus four from the catcher and minus three from the pitcher. That's minus seven altogether. Okay, so it's not 15 to three. Okay, one to 15 for a successful jump. It's one to eight, 15 minus seven. It's one to eight. And here, uh, one to six, if you don't get a good jump, 13 minus seven. Okay, so only one to eight. All right, this pitcher combination, pitcher catcher combination here is really cool. But there's also a further adjustment. Because he's being held on, this first number gets reduced by a further 2. This second number, if he doesn't get the jump, 5-4. If we don't get the jump, we're still right here next to the first baseman who's standing right next to first base. So it wouldn't be uh, 1 to 6 if I don't get a jump. It would be 1 to 2. Okay, It wouldn't be 1 to 8 if I get a successful jump. It would be 1 to 6. So holding on here, Despite the hit on our fielding ability at first base, the fact that our first second baseman is also pulled around here as well, means we're really stopping this guy stealing. At this stage in the game, with one out, we have two men on base and a good hitter coming up, we're not going to try and steal. All right? So that's what would happen. That's super advanced stealing. This is how you, know, how you pick your teams as a manager. When you make that decision to hold, not hold, um, you know, where your field is set and so on is really important. It makes a big difference uh, to the game. Cool. So let's uh, swing away for Adam Eaton and then I think we'll wrap up the video because um, I've shown you a lot already in this in this short space of time about what the super advanced game's all about. There is some, there's more stuff to learn. There's more stuff. We've got super advanced injury charts. We've got different charts for squeeze plays and sack bunts, okay, which you know, we, we could do. Maybe a sack bunt's good. Uh, a super advanced hit and run chart. But also there's a new ground ball chart as well. So remember we've got ground ball X, which is what we're doing here, uh, what we did did here with the with the fielding chart. We've got ground ball A, B, C. Um, and then we've got, and you have to knock to the rule book. I kind of wish um, there was a separate chart for this too, but there's a ground ball result chart for super advanced. Okay, and again, it depends. 
the outcome depends on where uh, where runners are on the bases. Okay, so rather than just a simple, you know, x result, y result, um, a b c. You know, this is a double play or the runners hold or whatever. It depends where the um, where the, what the field's doing. It depends where your runners are. Okay, so a little bit more advanced. Okay, let's take Adam Eaton's at bat and we'll see what happens next. Remember, we're rolling the d20 because we've got men on base. So that's a 5, 7, and 8 on the d20, so we can ignore that. So we're on James Shields. We're facing a lefty, 5, 7. Uh, it's a ground ball to the second baseman, X. Okay, this is cool. So remember, we're holding base runners. If we look at our, our, look at our chart, we're not holding the guy at third. We're hiding, holding the guy at first. Runner on first. We've got a left-handed batter. Then... The field is responsible for holding the runner at the first baseman and the shortstop. Okay, our second baseman's not involved because we've got a left-handed batter. So the second baseman who's fielding the ball is not impacted by the runner being held. He keeps his fielding rating. Now remember, this is a ground ball X. Okay, so this ground ball result chart doesn't apply. Ground ball result chart only applies to ground ball A, B, C. Okay, ground ball A, ground ball B, ground ball C, ground ball X comes down to X. The X rating of our fielder, the arm of our the fielding rating of our fielder. Okay, second baseman. Now remember, we're playing corners in, but this is a ground ball to the second baseman, so it's unaffected. Okay, with a runner on third, uh, pitcher and catcher are considered to be playing in, so um, a ground ball to the uh, to, to the pitcher would be treated like infield in. A ground ball to the third or first would be treated like infield in. Uh, second or short here, well actually shortstop will be affected because he's holding on. But a ground ball to the second baseman with corners in, holding on with a lefty. Our second baseman is completely unaffected, right? He's playing just as normal. So it's just like infield back. So our second baseman is doing some work. Second baseman is Infante. We know that Infante is a 3E14. Remember we wrote it down last time, 3E14. So we go to our super advanced chart. And we're going from left to right. So range 3, we roll the D20. We get 11, that's better. This time we get a G2. Okay. We're going to roll these three dice to see if we're it. So he's under it. He's going to get the cut. He's going to take the ball. It's uh, 7, 11. There's no 11 here. It's a 5, 3, 9, 12, 17. No error. So it's a G2. Let's go to the right. Symbols G2. No error. Okay. Refer to the following chart and look up the final result on the Super Advanced Grand Ball Results chart. Okay. This one here. No words. So the base is empty. No. We've got runners on first and third. Okay. First and third. So... Infield normal or infield in. Um, infield normal because it's second baseman and it's treated like infield back. is a force. Okay, so we've got Eaton running over to first. Danks is forced to second. Batter safe and the runner is out going to second. Other runners advance one base. Okay, so it's kind of like a fielder's choice here. We've let the um, runner score. Batter is safe, and we've taken out the man at second. So as it goes, it was a bit of a good result for um, for the White Sox. We weren't able to turn the, the uh, double play with the second baseman Infante not playing in. Okay, if it infield in, we would have turned the double play. As it goes, you had to field the ground ball, um, a higher die roll, anything higher. We've got a G1 that would have been a double play. We got a G2. We only just managed to safely field the ball and uh, tag second base before Danks was able to reach it. So Eaton singles. Uh, Flowers comes in to score. So that's an RBI for Eaton. I don't think that's a fielder's choice. And then Danks is out. Second out here. I think we should uh, finish up the inning. It makes sense. So 
Eaton's on base, Flowers came around to score. Nice result. What's the score now? Uh, Chicago are up 4 0. That's uh, in the top of the fourth with Semyon coming into bat. Okay, we've got a righty. Um, we're going to hold the base runner again. I'm going to hold Eaton here. So we've got our D20. We're going to see if this gives us a wild pitch or a bulk. doesn't, it's a 9, we've got a 4-4, four, four. it's a Gramble to the third baseman, Gramble X again, uh, third baseman is Moustakas, Moustakas is a, third baseman is a 2-E24, let's roll our X, that's a 4, so we got a two a G with a four. That's a G three hash. It says if a symbol is followed by a hash, then in the following two situations, use the symbol SI two in place of the original symbol. This infielder is positioned in. He's not. We're infield back. The infielder is responsible for holding on a runner. Third baseman is not responsible for holding on. Uh, we got a right hand. Uh, we've got a right-handed batsman first and second are holding on, the runner at first. So it's still a G3. We're going to run for an error. We've got um, a 9 off an E24. So Moose can make lots of errors, but if we check, uh, we've got 5, 11, 12, 13, 14, 3, 17, 18, no 9 there, so no error. So it's a G3 with no error. Uh, base is empty, now we've got a man on first, uh, which means, uh, if we look at this chart, runner advance, it says batters is out and all runners advance, but we're on two outs. So, batters out, uh, running over to first. So that was uh, third baseman, so five to three, you can say, instead of a um, I was writing G5 previously to say ground ball out at 5. You can write 5 to 3. So, 5, third baseman fields it, tosses it over to first base. Number 3, runners out. 5 to 3, that's the third out to end the inning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and it's given you a, a kind of a, a broad overview of how the super advanced game plays. If you'd like to see more, then we can continue. Just let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.